This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. People share their history with you because they don't want to see you, you know, repeat the same thing they know about. They have seen the movie that you're trying to finish, and they know exactly how it ends. We're kicking off the holiday season here at World Changers Church International with our special Thanksgiving Day service. Join us at 10 a.m. Eastern in the World Dome on Thanksgiving morning to start your holiday off right. We are forever grateful for all that God has done, and we want to set aside this time to celebrate with you all. If you're not in the Atlanta area, join the live stream. See you on Thanksgiving morning. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love. We're going to pick up with the series on emotional maturity, and uh, this, is, uh, this is going to be pretty good for you tonight. I think you can really eat it good. Emotional maturity, uh, just in review, it's all about your ability to understand and manage your emotions. So when we talk about emotional maturity, it's about your ability to understand and to manage your emotions. Uh, now, God gave us emotions but he never meant for emotions to govern our lives. So we have emotions. A lot, a lot of times Christians try to pretend like they are emotionless. We have emotions. God just wants to make sure that emotions don't have you, okay? All right, so um, an emotionally mature person, we're talking about uh, learning how to be emotionally mature, an emotionally mature person has reached a level of self-understanding with regards to their thoughts and their behaviors, and then what happens is they decide how to best approach or how to cope with the situations that might otherwise be trying or challenging in their lives. A lot of people end up in bad, bad uh, dilemmas because they don't know how to deal with those emotions. So being emotionally mature can help you reach successful solutions to your problems as well as keep problems from overwhelming you. So a lot of things that happens in the life of a Christian is not really because of the devil, it's because of emotional immaturity. And if we don't learn how to mature emotionally, you keep, you know, allowing yourself to be put in a position where you just end up in dumb places because you get angry and don't know how, what to do with it. You get sad, don't know what to do with it. You get depressed, don't know what to do with it. And then crazy stuff comes as a result of you not understanding how to take authority over your emotions. If you understand that, say amen. amen. So what we did the last time, uh, well, every time I preach on Wednesday night, we're, we're, we're talking about the signs of emotional maturity. And it was, how can you tell that you are mature or not emotionally? How can you tell if you are going down the path of emotional maturity? Well, we've already talked about three of them. Number one, we said being flexible. When you are a person that can be flexible when plan A didn't work out, but you're flexible enough to go to plan B and plan C, that's, uh, that's just a sign that you are maturing emotionally. If you're a guy that starts freaking out and cussing folks out and acting crazy because plan A didn't work, you are not flexible and neither are you mature emotionally, okay? Number two, we talked about taking ownership and responsibility. Taking ownership and responsibility of your stuff and of your life 
is proof that you are emotionally mature. However, if you play the blame game and you want to blame somebody else for your situation or blame somebody else for the circle that you're standing in, your circumstance, that is a clear, clear sign that you are emotionally immature, playing the blame game. And let me tell you something about playing the blame game. You don't grow blaming people for where you are. You don't grow. I think what I used was the fact that you can't keep blaming the floor for your inability to dance. It's not the floor's fault that you can't dance. And you've got to accept responsibility and not continue, well, it's that person's fault, it's that person's fault. You know, Adam blamed Eve, you know. It's that woman you gave me. And as long as you play the blame game, you stay the same. And that's the issue. You, you, you play the blame game, you stay the same. So I ask God to help you to at least recognize when you're playing the blame game because you're not emotionally mature when you're playing the blame game. And then uh, the last time I was here, we talked to you about knowing, um, knowing uh, that you don't know everything. It's okay that you don't know everything because the truth is you don't. And it's okay that you don't know everything. It's the, I, I think I talked about the blessing of not knowing. And the blessing of not knowing is now you have to depend on God. Now you have to really trust God. But if you walk around thinking you know everything and can't nobody tell you none because you know that you know that you know, no, I, it, it's cool that I, I, I am very serious when I say the more I learn about God, the more I realize how much I don't know. I mean, I mean, just when you think, it's when I knew little that I thought I knew more than what I, I knew. And some people know more than what they understand, <laughs> you know. But man, I am convinced right now by the, by the Spirit of God, He is deep, He is high, He is wide. And what I thought I knew, I found out I don't know at all. Praise God. He is magnificent, full of love, and all the things that, you know, we just kind of mentioned. So tonight, Here's what we're going to talk about. This is, I don't even know if I've ever taught this tonight. I'm excited about it. We're going to look at the, the path of looking for learning and growth uh, from, every, from every opportunity that you go through. In other words, every experience that we have in life, look for the learning and the growth that you can get out of those experiences that you have in life. This is something you do intentionally. I am going to be intentional about getting the wisdom out of everything I go through. I'm going to be intentional about growing from everything that I go through. And so there are some pretty hard scriptures to look at on that. So an emotionally mature person is on the lookout for what can be learned from any situation or any opportunity. And then he searches for the growth opportunity within that situation. And he asked himself this, how can I learn and grow from this? Now, everybody goes through stuff all the time and every day, but we don't intentionally say or ask ourselves the question, how can I grow and what can I learn from this? Sometimes we're just so busy trying to figure out whose fault it is. Uh, but, you know, it, it, you know it's, it's a part that we played. And, I have found that has been probably the, one of the biggest blessings of my life. This thing that I've gone through, what can I learn and how can I grow from it? I, I did that when, when, when I was going through the cancer diagnosis, it was like, okay, uh, what can I learn and, um, you know, how can I grow from this? And you would think, well, what do you mean what you can learn? It's the devil. No, it was some things that I began to learn and that I began to grow in just my everyday life and the decisions that I, that I made in my everyday life. And even, even, you know, my desire to want to be very intense about excellence in ministry, there's a way to do that, but then there's a wrong way to do that, to be stressed out 24 hours trying to be excellent. <laughs> okay? I don't have to not be excellent for the sake of not being stressed, but I can, I can, continue to grow towards excellence. And so what do I learn out of three tumors in my body? What do I learn and how do I grow from a cancer diagnosis? I'm saying you can 
intentionally do that with almost any experience that you go through. And if you do, you're going to find out tonight you're going to be better for it. Develop a passion for learning. Because if you do, you will never cease to grow. Develop a passion for learning, and if you do it, you will never cease to grow. So you see that learning and growth go hand in hand. You want to know if you're really growing in the things of God? The learning and growth go hand in hand. I want to maintain a passion of learning. I want to, to, to never cease in my growth. I don't want to just get up and preach the same thing I know. I want to grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to experience that intimate relationship with him and begin to, to share it with people because the day I stop learning, the day you stop learning, is the day you stop growing. It's the day you stop growing. And that is so true with so many people who become so complacent with what they already know as if Jehovah Jireh is that limited that you think in your few years of being saved, you know everything there is to know about God. That, that, and preachers especially. Amen. You're the preacher, so you know everything. You allow a link in your breath thing. A, a, a preacher don't know everything. Just because he wears a collar, there's still learning opportunities. And I want to keep learning. And I ask the Lord this a long time ago, Lord, please help me to be someone that can, that, that's always a student. I want to be a student of grace. I want to keep learning. What am I doing? I'm continuing to grow because I continue to learn. You have to be intentional about that. That can't be something that, you know, you wake up and say, well, let me see how I feel about it. You have to be intentional about that. And one of the things I've, I've learned over the next, of the, the upcoming weeks, I'm going to really be uh, strong on our leaders, you know, meeting with our leaders, retraining our leaders, because you've been doing something for 20 years don't mean you know everything there is to know about it. Especially leadership. Leadership always has to be learning. Leader, when was the last time you paused to learn something? We don't have any excuse today. You got, you got Google and Siri and AI coming out too soon. You, you should always be digging. I, I love researching. I want to, I research what I, Say it. In fact, I research what I research because I'm, I know there's something here that I can know and understand better. I want to keep growing. I, I, just, I just don't want to end up, it's over, you're dead, you're in heaven, and I get to heaven and I'm blown away and find out I had a dust ball knowledge of who I thought God was. Amen. Leaders have got to always be in the posture of learning because leaders need to grow. And you can grow from your bad experiences as a leader, and you can grow from your good experiences from a leader, and you can grow by listening to the testimony and the history of other leaders. But leaders have to be willing to continue to grow and to learn, okay? And now, so let's talk about something right quick. Let's talk about learning from your mistakes. Learning from your mistakes. In, in, in this life, please understand this. In this life, ladies and gentlemen, we will make a lot of mistakes. Can I get a witness in this house? Isn't it? In this life, we will make a lot of mistakes. However, mistakes make us stronger because they are a learning experience. Mistakes can make you stronger because they are a learning experience. We'll get in Scripture in a moment. Somebody say, Pastor, you're just making all this up. What does Scripture say? I'll show you what Scripture say in a minute. I'm just trying to get you to understand that you, you don't run away from mistakes. Don't let mistakes beat you down. Don't let mistakes tell you God don't love you no more. Don't let mistakes tell you you're going to go to hell. Don't let mistakes do any of those things. Mistakes make us stronger because they are a learning experience. And, and, and you might be shocked when you get to heaven to see how many of those mistakes God allowed to happen. You've got to grow. So there are certain things that's got to happen in our life to grow. But if you come up with this belief of, 
well, I'm a Christian and, oh, God hates me and I'm going to hell because I made a mistake. No, the mistake is a growing experience, a growing opportunity. I'm cool with that. I'm not beating people up for their mistakes. I'm not saying, what did you get out of it? What did you learn? A learning experience. Boy, that ought to kind of help you redefine a mistake. Uh, learning, guess what happens when you drive a car and, and, you, and you take the wrong turn? You know, when you have to go to that destination again, if, you intention, if you're intentional about learning, you will understand, don't turn here. Learn something the last time when I turn here. You know, so, and this was before maps. I don't really know how we used to do it. I know I used to do it. Uh, give me a, 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 a sign. What was that? A, a symbol of where I am. Some, a landmark. Give me a landmark where there'll be a McDonald's right there on your right, right in front of a Crystal's. Well, I ain't going to make it in your house with McDonald's and Crystal, but we. But you learn from your mistakes. I, I need y'all to hear this. I need you to hear this. You're not a bad person because you made a mistake. Now, here's the deal. Hopefully, you're learning from those little mistakes as you grow up and you come on, so you won't make them big mistakes that will cost you big time. Like a big mistake, like you know you don't want to go and rob somebody because if you get caught, the po po going to get you and you're going to jail. <laughs> well, you don't learn from that mistake. And, and what happens is people go to jail, and then some of them get out, and they didn't learn anything. Guess what happens? They go and do it again. Christians do the same thing. Do the same thing. Well, you know, I got, with this, I got with this lady, and she was so fine, and, and then I did this, and, you know, how long did you know her? I just met her, and, then, and, and, and now you're burnt. And then you go do it again. You didn't learn nothing from that mistake. You might need to know these people. <laughs> and a whole lot of other stuff I hadn't said about that, okay? <laughs> Not to mention that you might ought to be married. Oh, don't nobody believe in that no more, Pastor. You ain't got to be married. I'm saying you're going to have to learn some stuff. You're going to have to learn some things so that you can learn how to be wise. And life will teach you through a series of mistakes that your holier and thou, uh, holier than thou self didn't want to hear nothing about. But I tell you what, when that mistake comes and that, and that circumstance start whooping that butt, then all of a sudden you're ready to learn something that you didn't even want to learn when you came to church. If you don't learn your lesson, your situation is going to occur again. Look at Proverbs 26, verse 11 and 12 in the NLT. If you don't learn the lesson, if you don't pull the wisdom uh, and, and, and something out of that situation, it'll happen again. It'll happen again. Somebody says, I don't know why I keep in the marriage the same old no good for nothing man. Because you didn't learn from the last one you would. You keep, you keep, you keep letting the curls and the cologne, you know. <laughs> okay, so here's what he says in verse 11. He says, as a dog, as a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his foolishness. There is more hope for fools than for people who think they are wise. We shouldn't be like dogs that return to vomit. We shouldn't be the ones that go back, back again to foolishness. Learn the wisdom. Get the lesson out of the situation you're going through so you won't see it occur again in your life. What about learning from the mistakes from others? You know, I like to sit down and, and talk to people about, I mean, have pretty lengthy conversations about things I've gone through and what I've learned from those things I'm going through. And I'm, and I'm sharing it most of the time because I want you to avoid something. Uh, both of my G babies came over to just to say, hey, one of them in college and the other one senior high school, and he came over and he's, and I sat down and I said, I feel led to talk to you about something. And I don't know if you were in the, uh, confessions this past week when I drew those circles and I talked about uh, time, life, 
response and results. Well, I wanted to break it down a little bit more to him. And he was listening. And this joker started falling asleep while I was talking to him. <laughs> and I told him, I said, now, now, I'm not going to ever talk to you about this again. I said, this is an opportunity for you to understand life. Never going to talk to you about it again. So you might want to do everything you can to stay up. I am giving you something so valuable. I'm giving you something that I learned through mistakes. I'm giving you something that I now understand that no, no matter what life brings to you, no matter what happens, if you can learn how to respond the correct way, the Bible way towards that, you're going to love your results. And responding God's way may not feel good, but the results is what you're going to learn. It's going to be good. So, you know, if you, yeah, you know, yeah, yes, sir. All right, all right. Never going to do it again. I, I, am, I am getting pretty good at that. It's like, all right, I'm talking to you. To, I, I, this is it. And then when it happens, I, I, I act like, you know, well, Dad, what you think? Mm -mm, I'm none. I don't think nothing. Um, my, 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 my brain ain't even on. What you mean what I think? People share their history with you because they don't want to see you, re re you know, repeat the same thing they know about. They have seen the movie that you're trying to finish, and they know exactly how it ends. And for some reason, you know, it's like going down a street, and, you know, two months ago, the street continued. But you don't know they, they tore the bridge down. It's now a dead end and a cliff. How do I know that? Because I went down there. I saw the dead end and I saw the cliff. I almost went over it. So I'm saying to you, don't go down that street. It, it, it's cut off. It's a dead end and a cliff. I want to see myself. You know, that's your generation. My generation, we got to see ourselves. If I'd have known, I'd have took some insurance out on you real quick. <laughs> Learning from the mistakes from other people. Most people who've made mistakes don't want you to make the same mistake. Yeah. You know, like your mama and dad and people that love you, they don't want you to make the same. So, so they pour out wisdom to help you to learn. Pour wisdom out to help you to learn. I'm trying to empty myself. I want to take it, the Lord doesn't tear it, which don't look like it's going to be tearing long. Uh, I want to empty myself. I'm, I'm to the place right now that no matter what I preach, <coughs> it's, a, <coughs> it's an opportunity to empty something on other people. But I do realize people are going to do what they don't, don't want to do, but I can still keep pouring. Look at this in Proverbs 21 and 11 in the King James. Proverbs 21 and 11. This is so, so very, very Im important. You know, looking at every situation, every circumstance, looking for learning and growth from every opportunity. Looking for learning and growth from every opportunity. Proverbs 21 and 11 says, when the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. Should be. You see what the scorner had to go through. And when the wise is instructed, what happens? He receives he receives knowledge. Look at that, that progression right there. You know, learn from the mistakes of other people. I like Proverbs 12 and 15 in the NLT. Turn there. Proverbs 12 and, and 15 in the NLT. He's just pretty straight with this scripture. This is, this is good. He says, fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. Fools... That's the guy who says in his heart, there is no God. Fool, fools think their own way is right. I, I, I spent some considerable amount of time like, Lord, you know, I don't want to think that my own way is right. So when I'm telling you something that is right, you need to know I've, 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 I've gone, I've taken that through stuff. I've, I've taken it through things. I've looked at things. I've experienced things. I've seen the hurt part of it. Fools think their own way is right but the wise listen to others.
Did you know your emotions determine your level of victory? In Creflo Dollar's seven-part series, How to Mature in Your Emotions, he identifies the key to unlocking a successful life through maturing spiritually and emotionally. An emotionally mature person will work towards a better understanding and a course of action moving forward. Responsibility equals accountability, and accountability equals ownership. It's okay to fail. It's okay to make mistakes. Nobody is perfect. And only by failing and making mistakes can you learn and get better. That's life. It's when you take responsibility for your life that you discover how powerful you truly are. This must-have series is available for a love gift of 40 U.S. dollars or more for CDs or 50 U.S. dollars or more for DVDs. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit creflodollarministries.org and click e-store today. Let's get Psalms 91 equipped. We're back. Are you ready for Change Experience 2024? 2023 was groundbreaking, and 2024 will lay the foundation for life-changing transformation. Craflo Dollar is hitting the road for Change Experience West Coast in February and Change Experience East Coast in April. It'll all end with Grace Life, the reunion at the World Dome in July. The power, the word, the worship, the grace. You won't want to miss it. It was emotional, it's powerful. You get to learn how you can apply the word of God to your life. Come to one of these experiences. You're not going to leave the way you came. Mark your calendars now for an unmatched experience with the Lord. To claim your spot, text CHANGE2024 to 51555. Scan the QR code on your screen or visit creflodollarministries.org today. The 2020 Vision Partner Program at Creflo Dollar Ministries is more than a program. It's a relationship designed to make a high impact in your life, our lives, and the lives of millions around the world. Text 2020 Partner to 51555 to become a 2020 Vision Partner today. You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere. All of this is at your fingertips with our state-of-the-art custom-designed app. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages, sermon series, and more. Add events to your calendar, set reminders, get directions, share with friends, and even give securely through this platform. Visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.